Mr. Klein here with our first of our two lessons in this chapter on chemical bonds. The first one will kind of describe chemical bonds and why they are there. In the second lesson, we'll talk about the two most common types of chemical bonds, which are covalent and ionic bonds. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, just going right in. Now we know what molecules are. Of course, molecules are two or more atoms bonded together chemically. But why do they bond? I mean, what's the matter with the atoms in the periodic table just floating around by their lonesome? Why do we have all of these complicated molecules? Well, in order to discuss this, we need to talk about why atoms need to bond. There are 92 naturally occurring elements in the universe. Now, despite this low number of pure substances, there are literally millions of known molecules and compounds in the universe and possibly many more not even discovered yet. I mean, as long as you can get the uh, atoms to bond and hold together, a molecule can be as big as you need. Now, how can this be the case? Well, the answer lies in chemical bonds or the force of attraction between atoms. Okay, so it's the, uh, what attracts atoms and they stick together, that's what chemical bonds are. If atoms were not naturally attracted to each other, there wouldn't be any molecules in the universe as we know it couldn't exist. Okay, so that's why, that's what chemical bonds are, and, and we're going to get into why with that. So let's go ahead right here and let's explain how they form. Uh, when atoms form chemical bonds, it's because they lack a complete energy level of electrons. The outer energy level in an atom is what we call valence, okay? And the electrons in that energy level are what we call valence electrons, and this is really important. Now, for middle school, we just kind of need to know what valence is. High school, we get really in-depth into valence electrons and things like that. So if you're watching this as a high schooler, this uh, is only just a brief overview of it. Now, the number of valence electrons in the outer uh, energy level depends on the energy level. First one is two, second one is eight, and it goes on from there and end up having suborbitals and things, things like that. Atoms seek to be stable. They either want to have a full valence energy level or nothing at all in the outer energy level. Uh, so they bond by doing either one of two things. They either give up valence electrons to lose a partially filled energy level, or they take electrons in order to fill it. On the periodic table, the number of valence electrons generally increases from left to right. Okay, so it increases from left to right. And let's look at this example. All right, so for our purposes here in sixth grade, we're only going to look at the first 20 uh, elements on the periodic table. We got fairly complicated valence levels, and you'll learn about that in high school chemistry uh, after number 20. So what happens is one and two, hydrogen and helium, the very first energy level of an atom has only two electrons. So hydrogen has one valence electron, helium has two valence electrons, but its energy level is full. The next energy level has eight. So lithium uh, in, the, in group one has one valence electron, group two has two, so on and so forth, and all the way up to group 18, which has eight. So boron and aluminum have three and things like that. Okay, so that tells you the number of electrons in the outer energy level. Okay, they want to have eight, or in the case of helium, two, so what will happen is atoms will bond with each other in one of two ways in order to get that full valence uh, energy level full. So let's go ahead and let's fill out, start filling out our uh, graphic organizer. Now you want to leave a lot of space. You want to put this kind of small. So first thing we're talking about are chemical bonds. Why do we have chemical bonds? It's because valence energy levels always want to be filled. You either want to have like all eight in there or you have none and so it drops down to the the uh, lower energy level okay so whenever they bond we form a, a chemical compound of course chemical compounds are two or more different types of atoms bonded chemically okay uh molecules are the same thing except that you could have two or more of the same atom bonding chemically but the same principles exist now Chemical compounds tend to have different properties than the individual elements, okay? And chemical compounds always contain the same elements, and more importantly, the same ratio of atoms. For, uh, for instance, water is always H2O. It's always two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom. If you add another oxygen atom or you add something else, what will happen is even if you change one atom in the compound, you complete, you completely create a new and different compound with different uh, properties. 
So, for instance, H2O, water's odorless and colorless. We drink it, bathe in, and stuff like that. We add one oxygen atom to the molecule, and we have hydrogen peroxide. It's odorless, colorless. It's also poisonous, okay? So we have carbon dioxide, one carbon um, atom, two oxygen atoms. Every time we exhale, we breathe out carbon dioxide. It's very important for photosynthesis also to be able to burn in to make oxygen. If we take one oxygen atom away, we have carbon monoxide. It's an odorless, colorless gas that's fatal to humans if inhaled in uh, too many quantities. So just taking or adding one atom, it's even the same atom, completely changes the properties of the molecule. So let's go ahead and let's add to our graphic organizer. Chemical bonds create chemical compounds. Chemical compounds are two or more elements bonded chemically. Okay, so let's add this to our graphic organizer. Let's move on to the next section. And if you notice, we had chemical formulas. For instance, when explaining chemical formula to someone, you can say water, and we know what it is. But if you want to be technical, it's H2O. Both are the same compound, but only one tells you specific information. Water? Well, what is water? I don't know. Could be anything. Okay, what we use instead is a chemical formula. Chemical formula is a way to express information about the ratio of atoms that make up a chemical formula. Okay? So what it does, when you read the chemical formula, it tells you the elements in the compound as well as the number of each element in the compound, which actually makes a whole lot of sense, and it helps chemists in order to figure it out real easy. So let's look at this. So we have water, H2O. Okay, in red, I have H2. Okay, H2, the 2 is what we call a subscript. It's a number that's slightly lower. The subscript tells you how many atoms of this element are in the compound. If there's ever an element, and if you notice the letter H, H is for hydrogen, we use those chemical symbols from the periodic table. Every time you have a letter there, you know there's at least one atom. So there's O with no number next to it. We know there's one oxygen atom. So what does water contain? H2O. It's two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom. And then we use the little subscript to tell us how many hydrogen atoms are in a water molecule. Okay, now... Let's go ahead and let's fill out our graphic organizer some more. Uh, chemical compounds are expressed as chemical formulas, which are the expression of ratio of atoms in a compound. And in your pentagon right there, go ahead and put an example, H2O. Okay, so that'll help you out in order to go that. And so let's move into the final part of this lesson, which is another way to describe chemical compounds. Okay, you can do that, but you know, you can use H2O or something like that. But what if you want to talk about the valence electrons? Well, you can use what we call a Lewis dot structure, which is a way of showing valence electrons in a chemical, chemical compound, rather. With a Lewis dot structure, you can show how many valence electrons there are in an element, and then try out the elements by counting the dots in order to fill it up. Okay, once all the valence electrons are filled for all atoms, you have a chemical compound that actually works. So what we're going to do is we're going to look right here at the uh, periodic table elements of 1 through 20, and you can see it in action. Okay, you see how hydrogen has one dot, second one, helium goes up. So what happens is it goes counterclockwise. So lithium starts on the right-hand side, beryllium goes up to the top, boron works its way around. And then we repeat the process once four valence electrons are there. If you see with nitrogen, it does the same thing goes all the way up to neon where the valence shell is full. A valence uh, energy level is full, rather. We do the same thing for argon, and then potassium and calcium, same thing. Same thing. We can do this for elements in that red area of the periodic table I showed you, but it's too complicated for what we're doing in our class. So we're going to only focus in class on these first 20 elements so you can understand how valence electrons and stuff work from there. So let's go ahead and let's finish off our graphic organizer. Uh, chemical formulas or Lewis dot structures, which are visual expression of valence electrons. And if you see right there in the organizer, I have oxygen. It has one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. It needs two more to be stable. So it'll bond in order to get those uh, valence electrons. And how it bonds will be talked about in the next lesson, which is in covalent ionic bonds. So let's go ahead and let's sum up this lesson. Chemical bonds uh, occur because valence energy levels of atoms want, always want to be filled. They want to have nice and stable. Okay, chemical bonds create chemical compounds, which are two or more elements bonded chemically. Chemical compounds can be expressed of one or two ways. One is a chemical formula. 
uh, which is the expression of the ratio of atoms in the compound. We have H2O for our example. And the little two is what we call a subscript, and it tells us how many hydrogen atoms are in the compound. The other way is where we use Lewis dot structures, which are visual expressions of valence electrons. So for each element in the compound, we put the dots in a particular order, and it shows us how many valence electrons they are. So there you go. That's the lesson on chemical bonds. Hope you understand it. It helps you out. And if, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know, and thanks for watching.